uh, we have obviously had a great ride and a great momentum coming into the show. Uh, it's been six years since we launched our first Tesla products. Uh, we have the fastest supercomputer in the US and now we just built the fastest supercomputer in, uh, in Europe, uh, in, in Switzerland. So, uh, you know, we, we really have uh, the top leading scientific countries investing in their research and their science around uh, accelerated by GPUs. In fact, if you look at the, uh, you know, the mural behind me, you can see all these scientific applications that are reaching 15 petaflops uh, with GPUs. Four out of the six Gordon Bell finalists at supercomputing are using GPUs and the Titan system. We actually had a really terrific set of uh, news and announcements. The IBM partnership is clearly a very important industry movement. IBM is partnering with NVIDIA to build the next generation of supercomputers uh, with us using the Tesla GPUs and the Power8 CPUs. And they're also uh, going to accelerate a whole range of their applications uh, for the enterprise and uh, for big data analytics okay. using the uh, NVIDIA GPU accelerators. So this is a great partnership for us. Uh, we believe that uh, obviously IBM is the leading computing company of the world and for them to back GPUs is terrific. Tesla K40, absolutely fabulous new product, highest performance accelerator on the market, very good energy efficiency, built for supercomputing. Uh, it doubles the memory, so it's really good for big data analytics. It has really interesting features like GPU boost that give you extra performance when there's power headroom. Uh, and of course, we also announced a new software release, the CUDA 6, which, which has a very important and powerful feature called unified memory. You know, developers have been asking for this, have been asking us to simplify memory management for a long time. Unified memory presents a view to the developer that the memory is one memory, and it takes away the memory management. It makes, there's a software automatically does the data movement, making the programming uh, experience much easier and dramatically improving programmer productivity. K40 is available now and, and CUDA 6 is, uh, has gone out to some uh, early developers okay. who, uh, who are the most active developers with us uh, and we'll, set, we'll put out a beta release which will go out more widely in a few months, in a few weeks. We think the data center is becoming, is going to become extremely rich next year. Right now if you look at the HPC community, for example, it is completely dominated by x86 on the CPU. Next year, we expect Power8, x86, and ARM64 to make a serious play into the data center. And it's, you're going to have the diversity of all these different types of CPUs and SOCs. One of the big things that the ARM64 SOC providers are talking about is different design points. So some of them will be focused on extremely low power, uh, SOCs, some of them on pretty high performance and, and medium powered SOCs. But I think the customer will get a lot of choice from a perspective of building these accelerated computing systems and what, G what CPUs they can connect to the NVIDIA GPU. We'll support CUDA on x86, Power8, ARM64. In fact, we, we, you know, we've already demoed ARM plus CUDA and we use it in our cell phone chips uh, which we've already announced the Logan project, Project Logan. Your CUDA program and your CUDA investment in writing these CUDA C, CUDA C++, and CUDA Fortran programs will, will work on any CPU architecture. It's open to all of them, right? We're not stuck on x86 or ARM or Power. We will open it to all three of them. From our perspective, developers should choose what they're comfortable programming in. Uh, you know, first of all, if you're, if you're trying to work on accelerators, a very good initial choice is OpenACC. And OpenACC is a directive-based compiler where you give the compiler hints and the compiler does the parallelization. And the version 2.0 has all these advanced features. For a lot of applications, OpenACC is the way to go, especially for applications which have 40, 50 years of code. Uh, it works excellent with Fortran applications. And we continue to think that OpenACC is a path for a lot of developers. In particular, a lot of HPC developers who have written you know, these codes for the last 20, 30 years, it's such a much easier way 
because the codes are already kind of built for parallelism, built for scale up, and OpenACC works extremely well with those kind of applications. Now, anyone who wants to do explicit parallel programming, most developers in our community, in the HPC community, are using Fortran, C, or C++. In those cases, the CUDA C or CUDA Fortran, CUDA C++, it offers a slight modification of these languages. It adds a few keywords to help you specify the parallelism, to help you express the parallelism. OpenCL is an alternative, but it's more of a driver level API, right, which is built more for people who have written in, uh, traditionally written consumer applications or are familiar with graphics APIs. Right, so it's, it's a choice that the developer has to make. Uh, we, we support all of these choices. Uh, we find in the HPC community, predominantly OpenACC and, and CUDA C, C++, or Fortran being the dominant uh, uses. Of course, we have terrific hardware. You can't play in this market without terrific hardware. But 90% of the effort is on the software is on the toolkits for CUDA, it's on the debuggers, profilers, it's the libraries. We're now building middleware. We have a new middleware library for uh, accelerating fluid dynamics codes called AMGX, right? So there's so much investment in the software. And I think um, for any accelerator company, or any company who wants to present an accelerator, you have to match or beat that level of investment in software. The objective of a developer is to get the best performance. And really the objective of these people is to get the science. right? And how do you achieve your science? Is it by arguing about programming languages or is it by choosing the path that gets you performance easiest, which has libraries, compilers, debuggers, which has ecosystem support? right? I think if you look at the IBM announcement, IBM is supporting us on CUDA. right? I mean, and so they've done the evaluation as well. And they, they can see also, and you can look at all the applications. Ansys Fluent is available, it's on CUDA. Right? All of these companies who are commercial companies have chosen to go with CUDA. Now, I think people who want to stay on OpenCL, you know, that's a perfectly terrific choice for them. But I just think that they should make sure that they have a, they've evaluated all the options. I don't think I've seen any customer application that uh, works, I, th I, th I thought, my belief is that most customer applications on OpenCL run faster on NVIDIA's GPUs than they do on AMD's GPUs. Okay, but there might be some that I don't know about which are faster. Uh, I know there are some synthetic benchmarks uh, which are out there that honestly, I mean, they those benchmarks, I have no idea. Yeah, they, I mean, what do they represent or if they represent any real application? But none of my customers evaluates our products using these benchmarks. They evaluate only with real applications. And I'm confident that the NVIDIA Tesla products are the highest performance products in the market. I think the notion that CUDA is closed is not completely accurate. We've actually put the CUDA compiler in the open source LLVM project, right? So you can actually take the LLVM compiler and build any new front end, any new language, and also target the LLVM compiler to any different accelerator and any different processor. And I think the other path, if someone is really looking for portability, the, the truly portable code is OpenACC. The problem with OpenCL on portability is it's not performance portable. So if you write OpenCL code for NVIDIA's GPUs, it will not run fast on AMD's GPUs or on Xeon Phi. You have to write the code for each accelerator separately because it's optimized to the accelerator. Because we have so many applications, they already have a preference to NVIDIA GPUs because their application already runs on it, right? So we don't actually see that dynamic of people doing comparisons or head or uh, kind of uh, kind of head-to-head uh, uh, -head comparisons between AMD and NVIDIA. Uh, most of our customers are just they're using applications. If they write their own. Uh, I think in most cases we, we win any customer benchmarks. The notion of APU, which is basically putting a CPU and GPU together on a single die, has been in our cell phone chips for maybe four or five years, yes. right? Yeah. So this is not a new concept, right? I, I know AMD does a lot of branding around it, but this is a simple concept. Ivy Bridge is an APU, yeah. right? It has a CPU and GPU. Yeah. Your iPad has an Apple. 
right? For the sober market, we don't intend, we have not announced and we don't intend right now in, in the near term to go build any integrated products. We have not made any such announcements. From a sober perspective or from a HPC perspective, uh, I don't know if uh, the idea of integration is the best idea for everyone. Okay. Because if you have a fixed area to build a chip, and now you put a CPU in it, and you put its caches in it, right? You have taken away the area from the GPU. So overall, you're reducing the performance of the accelerator to put the CPU in it. So there's a trade-off. And the advantage, of course, is that you get the memory which is shared, I mean, or you can communicate between the two much faster. It's definitely something we, we look at, right? But we have no announced plans to do that.